In Elden Ring, there are a lot of satisfying weapons to use. Some that might come to mind are katanas or maybe colossal swords. However, if you are looking for the most satisfying experience possible, I say look no further than curve swords. There are 15 of these bad boys in the game, and I'm going to be trying each of them out just for you. You are going to see the best and the worst that this weapon class has to offer, as well as what is probably the strangest weapon in the entire game. Let's get straight to it. So the first curved sword of the day is going to be the Scimitar. I have Keen Affinity as well as Spinning Slash. And it's actually kind of cool that we're starting off with this one because it has a unique R1 chain or semi-unique R1 chain that it does share with one other curved sword that we'll get to. You got the heavy attack string, the double spin. Oh man, it's so clean. Got good distance on the backstep attack. The only attack on curved swords I'm not a huge fan of is the rolling attack, if I'm being honest. And the running R2 is really good, as well as the running R1. And this is actually really, really exciting because we have the new and improved PvP experience with the poise changes and all that, so a two-hand curved sword is actually going to stagger now. I'm gonna space out your sword and smack you. Ooh. Nice. Watch out. I could have killed him there, but I pressed light attack too late. Good fight. And there you go. That is the scimitar. Not really a lot to say. Uh, I really do love the R1 string. I think it is just one of the best attack strings in the entire game. And overall, I do think that running a curved sword with spinning slash is one of the most reliable combos that you can use. You're fast, you do good damage, especially if you have successive attack buffs, and it's just fun, which is what matters, right? Anyways, next I have a keen falchion with stormcaller. Don't 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 even ask why. Like I I, I don't know. I thought stormcaller would be just kind of funny. Now, as for the light attack string, this is just the basic curve sword move set. And I might as well show you guys the power stance move set, which does have one of the best roll catching attacks in the entire game. And of course, I mean, it's going to be very fluid. The backstep attack is one of my favorites. It's just a nice 360. I don't even know how your character can manage to move like that. Like, it doesn't even make sense. But then the roll catching attack I was talking about is the running power stance attack. And it is just so nice. And mainly, I'm going to be two-handing these curved swords, but maybe for a couple of them, I could do a power stance fight. Who we got? Faraday. Hello? All right. Uh, Falchion with Stormcaller. I'm not, not sure how I feel about this. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, well, now I know how I feel about it, and I like it. H honestly, I think we just chalk it up to the Keen Falchion with Stormcaller being goaded, and, 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 and we just move on. Next, I have a Lightning Shamshir with Sword Dance. Which, in case you didn't know, it does fall under the scimitar weapon family, I guess you could say. Which makes sense because this has the same light attack string as the scimitar. These are the only two curved swords that have this string. Oh yeah, and in case you guys don't know what sword dance looks like, here you go. Get a lot of distance on it. You can delay that last attack quite a bit. Hey, somebody gets cocky and like rushes towards you after the first two attacks. I mean, at this point in the video, you guys haven't even seen the normal light attack moveset in action. Also, it seems like I'm going up against a lot of new players. I don't... Oh my God. Wow. That was a lot of damage very, very fast. Good fight, large biggle bog. <laughs> Anyways, next I have this Lightning Gross Messer, which I just really love the look of this weapon. It's super simple, but clean. Kind of makes me feel like I'm a pirate. I don't know why. And there is nothing unique about this curved sword. It will drop from specific kinds of skeletons and catacombs, and it only has a 2% drop rate at 100 discovery. So it is kind of rare. Now I say that there's nothing unique about this setup, but as a matter of fact, there is. In case you didn't know, curved swords get this very, very stylish parry. 
However, as far as parries go, this is one of the worst in the entire game. It just has very, very bad frame data. And that is actually the case with any weapon parry. All around, they are just going to be harder to land. Hey, but let's go see if we can land one. Battle Mage, hello. All right, so I'm going to try to parry you. I would really appreciate it if you would let me. There we go, baby. Oh my god, yep. Oh, okay, he's gone. He's dead. Okay, well, new crit buffs have definitely made crits in insane. But I mean, yeah, there you go. That is the Gross Messer and the very saucy Curve Sword Parry. Okay, now, this next setup is a Power Stance setup. I have two Bandit's Poison Curve Swords, one with Poison Moth Flight and the other with Poisonous Mist. And whether you're two-handing, one-handing, or power stancing the Bandit's Curve Swords, it is just the basic move sets all around. And the idea behind this setup is to use Poisonous Mist to at least get the Poison Weapon buff. And then you bring out both of them, try to poison your opponent, and then use Poison Moth Flight. Which, if your opponent is poisoned and you hit them with that, it will do a lot of damage. Alright, who do we have here? We got Flare. Hello. All right, we have the poison buff now. Whoa, what in the world? This is a whack match so far. <laughs> okay, they weren't poisoned, so it didn't really do any damage, but it did poison them again. Dude, what is going on in this fight? They just like randomly pulled out poisonous mist. What I hey hey I'm I don't even know what to say. Um, good fight. But yeah, I mean you guys get the idea. Overall, the bandit's curve sword is very very good for elemental builds. And if we're talking about this setup specifically, you can use this with curve swords, straight swords, or daggers if you want. And it's just very very fun. And I think it's honestly kind of underrated. Next up, we have one of the weirder weapons of the bunch with the Shotel. I have Blood Affinity as well as the Ash of War Blood Blade. And the Light Attack String is very similar to the other Curved Swords that we've seen. However, the Heavy Attacks are a little bit different, which honestly, I'm not a huge fan of these. And this weapon does have Anti-Block, so it ignores 40% damage negation from blocking. And I'm pretty sure it is also the lightest Curved Sword of them all. All right, let's see what we can do here, though. <laughs> God, dude, blood blade. Hiya, hiya, hiya. <laughs> oh my God, it's so dumb. All right, we should end it with a unique heavy at least, right? <laughs> hey, good fight. Okay, we still have five non enchanted curve swords left and then the enchanted ones. God, dude, the enchanted ones are so interesting, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Next, I have a flowing curve sword with keen affinity and double slash. And I'm not gonna lie, this weapon is very, very unassuming just based on the look. You know, you swing it around, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah what's so special about it? You know, there's nothing that cool about. Oh yeah, this weapon just has the coolest heavy attacks in the entire game. Rumsoft has us doing bow layout here mid-combat. It's a beautiful. And these heavy attacks can blend very, very well with like double slash and sword dance and stuff like that. All right, obviously the goal here is to land a fully charged heavy attack. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure how easy this is going to be. Ooh. 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 Yo, those animations go so well together, bro. That is insane. Good fight. Yo, what the hell, dude? I'm definitely going to watch that one back multiple times. Oh, yeah, and GG's to Bellevere. We fought another time before that fight, and he smoked me as I was trying to go for this. See, if you can land the fully charged heavy and then get, like, a pressure string going after using, like, the light attacks and double slash... Hey, you guys saw the results right there. You get some crazy combos going.
Now, this weapon that I have in my hands right here is, in fact, the weapon I was talking about in the intro, and I really do believe this is the weirdest weapon in the entire game. This weapon is called the Mantis Blade, and I have Lightning Affinity on it as well as Kick because, hey, this weapon's weird. Why not go full weird? So the Mantis Blade is the shortest curve sword in the entire weapon class, and to sort of compensate for that, the heavy attacks are actually the longest reaching heavy attacks out of all the curve swords. And here's what they look like. Yes, you are seeing this correctly. Whenever you are holding this sword normally, it is folded in half. It straight up feels like I'm using a goth garlic press. Hey, let's make a deal. I hit the charged heavy on this man, and you charge heavy that subscribe. Any chance I could maybe uh, charged heavy attack you? I don't even I don't even like need to win the fight is the thing. I really just want to hit this charged heavy. Did that just do 441 damage? That there's no way. So yeah, uncharged did 342. I I, I think this is just bad. I think this is simply just a bad weapon. For the love of God, FromSoft, help this weapon out, please. It's too cool and obscure to not be at least decent. Just update it a little bit. Maybe make the heavy attacks a bit better. I don't know. Do something to it. It needs something else. Okay, but enough of the damn Mantis Blade. Let's move on to the Serpent God's Curve Sword. I'm rolling with Heavy Affinity and Braggart's Roar. And if you want to go Strength Pure, this sword is definitely a great option. But the moveset is just very, very basic. Nothing unique about it. Just the standard curve sword moveset. And then here is what the Braggart's Roar heavy attacks look like. Pretty basic. Just a run up, then a run up uppercut. We should get really good damage and really good hyper armor. Hello, Bandito. What is good? Hey. All right. Ready to uh, die? Damn it. Ow. Is that blood tax? Ooh. Oh. Okay, see, that's the thing. If you just tap your heavy attack, you're still gonna get the hyper armor. Oh, dude, that's so good. Oh, wait. Oh, it's down to the wire. Don't do it to me. Don't throwing dagger me. Watch out. Oh, let's go. We left with a stalemate. Hey, great fight, man. And as tempted as I am to jump into another fight with this, I am going to move on. But I do want to say that Braggart's Roar, I think, is just one of the most underrated PvP Ashes of War in the entire game. Or just Ashes of War in general. It's definitely good in PvE. Just think about it. I can put Braggart's Roar on a light weapon and do uncharged heavy attacks and basically get infinite hyper armor and win like most trades. Dude, I just knew that this setup was gonna be nasty. Next, I have the Beastman's Curve Sword with Heavy Affinity and Raptor of the Mist. And there is a very, very specific reason why I am using Raptors on this weapon. And that is because both the Jumping Light and the Jumping Heavy are multi-hit unique attacks. I swear, dude, the sauce just never ends with Curve Swords. But yeah, basically Raptor of the Miss, you do it whenever you're about to get hit with an attack. You'll then jump up in the air and then you can do a jumping light or jumping heavy, whatever you want to do. Oh yeah, and I realized that I had the talismans on from the last setup, so here are the new ones. All right, let's see what we can do here against Burb Strike. What is good? Oh, so clean, so swift. <laughs> oh. oh, damn it. <laughs> oh, this is so stupid. Hiya, hiya, hiya. Oh, he's just knocking me out of the air. He does not care. Oh, yeah. Hey, good fight, dude. Hey, and I really, really like this sword just from the look. And I think the unique jumping attacks 
are, are, are something that you don't see too often, you know? Like, I feel like it's not typical that weapons have unique jumping attacks, but hey, dude, Beastman's Curve Sword, definitely nasty. And last, but certainly, certainly not least, for the non-enchanted Curve Swords, we have the Scavenger's Curve Sword. I'm going with Occult Affinity, and the Ash of War is Seppuku. And the moveset is just your basic Curve Sword moveset. This Curve Sword does have very, very solid range for a Curve Sword. And in case you are not familiar with Seppuku, here's what it looks like. Yes, it does do damage to you, but it does buff your weapon. And basically, this buff increases attack power and improves your ability to proc bleed. And let's be real, there's nothing more menacing you can do at the start of a fight than plunge your own weapon into yourself and continue to fight. All right, who's going to be my victim? Imperius, hello. Don't mind me just uh, dabbing my lungs out. Ow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, Colleen. Good fight, Imperius. I have genuinely enjoyed every single setup that I have used today. Even the Mantis Blade is slightly enjoyable because it's such a meme. And we are finally on to the Enchanted Curve Swords, which are some of my favorite enchanted weapons in the game. First things first, we have the Nox Flowing Sword, which has B Scaling Index and D in Strength. And this weapon does have the same properties as the Shotel, so you still get the kind of weird heavy attacks. But of course, the Ash of War is unique. It is called Flowing Form, and here's what it looks like. Just a swift whip of your extendable Shotel. And when it comes to the Nox flowing weapons, I I've always been just underwhelmed by them. <laughs> is, there is that oil? Yo, you're, yo, you're tripping, bro. You're tripping, bro. What are you doing? Okay, I keep getting distracted. What I wanted to say was the Nox flowing weapons are just underwhelming. It's like, yeah, sure, you can like extend them and stuff. Like, basically, the weapons just, like, turn into whips for a second, and that's really it. It's like, if you want that range on a weapon, you can just use a whip. Uh, good fight. I don't... Dude, what? What was even going on during this fight? I don't even know. But don't worry, the weapon that I have in my hands here is much more exciting, and it's called the Wing of Estelle. You get solid scaling in both dex and intelligence. The light attack string is basic, nothing unique about it. However, the heavy attacks actually fire projectiles. Charged heavies will give you two projectiles, and then uncharged will just give you one. And for all you PvEers out there, this weapon actually deals plus 20% damage to gravity-type enemies. Also, the heavy attacks don't even use FP, which is amazing. Oh yeah, and then the Ash of War Nebula is really, really good. Basically, you cast it out, and then it explodes. It does a ton of poise damage and just a bunch of damage in general. It can even lead to true combos, like if you use it, somebody gets caught in it and then you just start wailing on him, you can get so much damage out of this weapon. <laughs> oh my god, I can just bully a whip user. No problem. Oh, it's so funny, dude. I love these projectiles so much. Good fight, Crane Man. So, I mean, we didn't manage to hit the Ash of War there, but just take my word for it. If you hit the Ash of War and then true combo it into your heavy projectiles, the damage of this weapon gets really, really absurd. And overall, it's just a great dueling weapon. It's good in PvE. Really just no complaints when it comes to the Wing of Estelle. God, over the course of this episode, I've found even more appreciation for Curve Swords, I swear. And one of them that I definitely appreciate most is the Magma Blade. This weapon looks cool, it's bejeweled, it's it, it's flashy in every single way. I mean, maybe its moveset isn't extremely flashy or anything. It's just the basic Curve Sword moveset. However, the weapon art, Magma Shower, is definitely flashy. It's basically a flame version of Spinning Slash that does leave lava on the ground. And if you're going to be prioritizing the Ash of War more, you should go into Faith. 
But if you want to just go more physical damage, you should go into strength. Hello, Ritterman. What's good? Wait, what? Okay, wait. All that didn't combo. Huh. Interesting. Hey, definitely solid chip damage from the lava, though, I'm noticing. I don't know. Maybe it would be wise to run this as a strength weapon instead. Oh, I couldn't even get to him. I mean, that's death. Okay, wait. That time it did combo, though. Okay, yeah. I'm not really sure what happened there. Could have just been some latency or something. But no, this definitely feels really, really nice. And honestly, the Magma Blade has been just a good weapon for a very, very long time. And if you're curious as to how you get this bad boy, it is a very, very low drop chance from the Man Serpents at Volcano Manor. And last but also least, probably the most disappointing weapon in the game, the Eclipse Shotel. This weapon scales C in Dex, C in Faith, and D in Strength. It requires 25 Dex and 30 Faith, so a decent amount of stat investment. And yes, this does have anti-block properties, which is, you know, solid. And yes, it does have the slightly weird heavy attacks. But now, the very special part about this weapon is, of course, the fact that it can inflict Death Blight with its Ash of War Death Flare. If it looks like it's going to be hard to hit, it's because it is. And yeah, you do get this weapon buff, so you can inflict a death blight with your attacks. What really sucks, though, is the fact that if you have this weapon upgraded, you are just going to kill your opponent before you have any chance to proc death blight. Again, that is if your weapon is upgraded. So actually, I'm going to rock with an unupgraded one and try to win by death blight because i'm going to be doing basically no damage per attack. So that will give me plenty of time to actually build up the meter. Let's go, baby! We actually got it! Oh my god. He really tried parrying me. That was... That was kind of dumb. With latency, trying to spam parry like that, with a weapon as fast as this, not gonna work out that well. And honestly, this weapon is just pretty tragic, because if they buffed it and actually made it good, then it would most likely be the most overpowered weapon in the game. However, in its current state, it's just not good at all. It just kind of sucks. And god, dude, this video is getting pretty long, so I'm just going to keep this outro short and sweet. I love curved swords, and I would highly recommend them. Make sure to comment down below what your favorite or least favorite curved sword is. And if you enjoyed the video, press the like. And as always, if you want to become a fellow monker, you can click that subscribe and that noti bell. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all your support. Just stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next video.